So if you watch my previous videos, you have seen me trying to make railroad spike knives. The first one was purely railroad spike, no carbon, low carbon. Um, did not get a good edge on it, not surprising. So for this second one, I did this, uh, this San Mai um, and put in some of this coil spring that broke off and thinking I could perhaps get it a little harder. Uh, that's the theory. Unfortunately, um, I don't think I really succeeded. I did two heat treats on this and I still wasn't happy with the hardness. So rather than going down the road of uh, spending time to make knives, uh, I think it might be a little wiser if I work out just how hardenable this is. So I'm going to try a number of different heat treats. I'm going to cut up a few pieces. Um, do it at just uh, just around the critical temperature when it's non-magnetic. Uh, take it a little bit hotter, sort of a, a brighter cherry red. Um, and then up to an orange and, and quench each one. And then do the file test and see if this is even, uh, even worth playing with. There's a lot of debate on the internet about what... Uh, what these contain and, and it seems that they contain a lot of different steels and a lot of different alloys um, some with carbon some without so I guess today we'll find out what this 2000 Toyota Sienna spring coil spring steel is uh, is really made of and and uh, if I can use it in knives so let's start chopping it up So I've got four pieces. I think what I'm going to do with them, um, I'm going to put them all in the forge and I'm going to uh, work them a little. And I'm going to let one air cool and then I'm going to do the quench on the other three as I described earlier. So uh, let's fire up the forge and uh, see what happens. I think one of the hardest things about doing this is look at this outside it's kind of a an orange color in fact even the camera shows it differently and uh, as we go inside it gets brighter and it gets brighter so where do we judge the color you know it's uh, it just shows that color is not really a good way to judge this which is why I'm thinking we use the, uh, the magnet guy here is number zero and where I stamp them I'm just gonna leave him on the handle and let him cool down in the air next guy number one I'm gonna let him cool down to what I think is around temperature so I think we're just getting there now so, you know, 
seconds just to bring him back up. And I'm going for the quench. So it's warm enough to so ignite the oil. I think we already know that this one is not going to be successful. This is what I did with the other blades. But just in the interest of science, we're going to do all three. So we put them on the anvil. That's number one. So number two, I'm going to get to, um, to a nice red color. Right now it's too warm, so I'm going to take it out. To me, that's bright orange. Take it into the garage, yeah, that's definitely bright orange. Just gonna let some heat come out of it. Let it get down to what would be a daylight red. And then we're going for the quench with this guy. Okay. So that's just changing from orange to red. I think that's probably a good place to go for it. Of course, my oil is uh, it's pretty warm. I don't know what that really means for this final quench. Um, so that was number two. Okay, final test, straight into the oil, number three. As bright as it comes out the forge, it's been in here about five minutes. As bright as it comes, straight in. This is the moment of truth. Zero through three, starting at this end. This is the uh, this is the air quenched. This is the uh, left on the anvil to cool down. And uh, sure enough, the file bites right in. No problem. No good. Number one. So this is the one that I've been quenching at uh, with my other blades was the uh, just around the critical temperature um, just uh, just the non-magnetic and bites in just as easy as it did with the unquench so now we get into new territory this is number two this was the red Feels a little, no, maybe not. So that doesn't seem like it's very much harder than the uh, than the other two. Last attempt. See if these coil springs are actually uh, any use for anything. I think the verdict is. No, they're not. Oh well, I guess we have an answer there if you have a, a 2000 uh, Toyota Sienna coil spring and you want to harden it. Um, this is not the way to do it, clearly. If anybody else has any suggestions of, uh, of how to get this stuff hard, uh, leave a comment. Um, Although I expect many of the comments will say, throw it in the trash, get yourself some proper steel. Where's the fun in that? So before we completely close the case on this experiment, I just want to do one final test. And that's just to see what happens if I hit these with a hammer when they're cold. Got the first mask on for this one. That was the unquenched one. Well, 
we lost the end of that one. So that had something about it. That was number one. Let's try number two. And again, we broke the end off that. If anybody can see the grain there. That's interesting. Of course, now I can't tell which one's which because I've just broken the numbering off. But uh, so we're on this final one. And there we go. Number three. So all the quench ones broke. Let me go back to the first one. Maybe it just needs hitting a little harder. Nope. So the quenching did achieve something. It achieved a level of brittleness, a level of hardness that allowed me to break the, th these uh, test pieces with the hammer, all three of them. So I gathered up the pieces of the, uh, the four experimental coil spring post quench. Again, this is the first one, this was the unquenched. Couldn't break it with the hammer, but we did get uh, the file into it. Um, as we did with all of them, this was number one, which was the the one that was quenched around critical temperature. And for any uh, metallurgists out there who uh, could explain some of these things, um, again, file bitting pretty readily. And uh, but when hit with a hammer, um, that uh, the end broke off. Same with this one. And same with this one. I'm not really sure um, if there's really any difference between those those last three. Um, they all broke. They all look the same. They all broke under the hammer. The uh, the filing was pretty much the same. Um, the file dug in pretty much the same on all pieces. I guess maybe on this last one it was uh, it was perhaps not quite as vicious on the biting, but uh, there we have it. Hope you find this useful. Um, and uh, I guess next time I won't be using coil spring. I'll be using something uh, a little more predictable. <laughs>